five. All right, Friday afternoon, just doing a quick live stream down here in the basement, the messy basement mentioned a couple of days ago. Just doing some regular maintenance on the GPSs and basically which is to update firmware and all this other stuff. And one of the biggest things, biggest complaints that I've had since I got the MAP66 as compared to some of the other Garmin's Instinct or InReach or anything like that is that uh, there hasn't been any firmware updates uh, posted since launch and I usually buy the models a couple of months after and that's why I usually have a how to update firmware video because there's always a firmware because it always fixes and we've known for the last few years that Garmin has been have to update the firmware quite a bit on Garmin products when they first come out because there's a lot of fixes. So I was actually kind of disappointed that there weren't that many updates or no updates up until very recently here. I just decided to come downstairs and plug it in. And, um, and I noticed that the device software is at 2.5 and it includes a whole bunch of fixed stuff and some of them were specific to some of the videos that I did. Uh, one of them was the weather map UI slowness. That was a noticeable, I would say, unusable feature up to that point. Uh, let's see, highway labels and freeway map labels being cut off. Issues accessing waypoint averaging from the ribbon. Uh, fixed issue where maps could load on power up. Fixed issue routing to next stage of geocache. Uh, fixed issue on confirmation prompts, fish, fixed issue with temperature data fi uh, text field, fixed issue with map page, fixed issue on cancel option, fixed issue ending track navigation, fixed issue with total ascent on a track. It goes on and on and on and on. And yeah, if you bought your uh, map 66, you definitely need. So I plugged it in. You can't use it with Garmin uh, Connect. So this was one of the things when you sync with the Garmin Connect is the ability to transfer firmware. With the wearables, you can do this now for a couple years now. Uh, you just sync with Garmin Connect with your smartphone, and now they have the feature where they'll all update all by itself. You don't really, you don't really have to do nothing with it. But for the handheld, you still got to plug it into your computer using Garmin Express. So you can't use Garmin uh, Connect because I've been checking for a while and just, I just don't come down here that very often. So I plugged in Garmin Express. I noticed there was a thing and I hit install all and I am bricked. Bricked. Uh, so I'm going to go through uh, the process here, try to resolve uh, the brick issue on my MAP66 and try to install this firmware update. So when you plug it into the computer, you get the USB icon. So couple things you can do. You can either try to press the power button, try to reboot it that way. If it doesn't work, take out the battery. This is one of the benefits of people who uh, the buy the GPSs with the uh, battery port, not unlike the old in-reaches, even the uh, new in-reaches. That's right, David, it's bricked. Um, you know, that's why we do like having these interchangeable batteries because you can actually, when it's bricked, you can actually change it over. So I took the batteries out for a few seconds. Got to usually wait a few, make sure everything's all done. I'm just using regular energizers for this one. I had noticed a random uh, power off. I'm seeing this weird thing here. So let me try to reboot it. Oh, here we go. It's going to restart. That's good. That's why you want interchangeable batteries or replaceable batteries, right? And that's what the InReach... But InReach is a different hardware. InReach is the Lorm, and they are they do stuff pretty hardcore. Okay, so I'm booted up now. So what I'm going to do, i got Garmin Express here on the computer, and I have Garmin Express already open. And I do... So I'm going to get on the home screen here. I'll flip it over here in a second to show you what I got. So I'm just going to plug it in here, plug it into the USB port here in the back, and let's plug it in here, oh, case, frick, here we go, well, there we go, all right, doing some stuff, flip it over to this thing, so now, let me flip it around here so you can see, oh, is it going to work, uh, let's do this. 
Whoop. Got Garmin Express. Right here. And there it is. I have my uh, device registered. So this should be turning on green so that I can use it. And it's not. So I'm going to see what's going on here. Well, over here. Over here. Here we go. All right, so, oh, here we go. Just got the check mark and the green icon. So now I'm good to go. So I'm going to go in here. Okay, let me just turn around here so maybe you guys can see what's going on. Maybe you can see. Let's get the Spotify out of the way. All right, so you can see here we got some software updates available. I have no idea how this is going to look like. But anyway, uh, I got two updates available. I got device uh, software and I got the time zone map. Then hit install all, click on that, and uh, that should uh, do it. Hit accept, and I'm going to hit continue to start updating, preparing the device so it downloads the, the files to the computer, and then transfers it over to the uh, device, and um, we'll do that. So what's going to happen here is that once it's finished transferring, the software over to the device, the device will do the update process here. So let's finish the train. And uh, let me just click on the refresh. Is there anything else? No. Okay. So I should just unplug this. And it should, hopefully, <laughs> reboot. I get the uh, alert here. Oh, you shouldn't, uh, you should eject. So, alright, so I press the power button to restart it again. And the reason why I did this, I had uh, I wanted to update the Garmin Express the first time and it just, uh, it bricked. I had to take out the batteries. New software found, continue installation. So let's do yes. And it's going to validate the software and, and update. It used to do this automatically. Uh, if you looked at some of the older videos I did, eTrex 20 and some of the other ones, you used to just uh, unplug the USB and you used to restart all by itself. You didn't have to hit the power button when you're doing this. And just validating the software or updating the firmware. And it restarted. And if you're curious, we're purging. We're trying to get rid of some stuff, so I've got stuff stacked here in the back. Rebooting. All right, so like I said, this firmware, there's a finally a firmware update for the MAP66, something that I've been uh, complaining about for the last little while, and I listed off quite a bit of fixes. <laughs> I'll uh, try to copy and paste. Oh, there it is, right there. So just to validate that firmware, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get to the main menu. Get down to setup. I know you guys don't see it here. System uh, about two point five. That's the system that we loaded on. So we successfully updated the software. So this should fix quite a bit of issues. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn on the Wi-Fi, and that's one of the things with this device. You can have Bluetooth connect to your smartphone and use some of the features, or it can hook up to a Wi-Fi when you're home, and just simple, just turn it on. I have the the thing already, should have it already set up. Do I? I can't remember. I did a reset video, so I don't know if I reset the, <laughs> the Wi-Fi network on here. How about if I just do weather? Where is weather? That was one of the features that they had was weather. Ah, you know, I'm not going to do this today. Actually, one of the things I wouldn't mind trying is the in-reach remote. This is another feature that I pointed at. I have my in-reach Explorer Plus. Let me turn this on. And this is a feature that when you're using an inReach, you're, you're probably going to have this clipped to your backpack and stuff like that. You use your smartphone to type messages, check the map, that kind of stuff. So this inReach remote on here makes a lot of sense. So what 
So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to try to pair it. Maybe there's something that they fixed that didn't mention it. So, so it's searching for an inReach. I'm going to flip over to this inReach, and I'm just going to try to uh, pair this. Pair this to a device. Bluetooth. Pair device. Pair again. All right, we're pairing again. All right, we're pairing. We're searching. We should do some. We should have something going on here. Now, I believe initially this was made for the InReach Mini, which came out a little bit earlier last year. Uh, allow you to just have it clipped and then use your uh, device or your uh, Instinct or you know, Phoenix Five that kind of stuff to uh, view messages, compose, send pings, that kind of stuff. But for us older users, uh, having an inReach remote feature on a Garmin handheld and not having it compatible with uh, an Explorer Plus or a DSC Plus kind of sucks. So let's see if there's something that they kind of fixed. So I'm just going to cancel the search, redo the search now. And probably not. Probably not going to work. This should work. If I have an inReach remote feature here on Garmin, oh, what's this here? Pairing failed. I'm going to try again. It's probably not going to work. Uh, why do I want this? Well, as an inReach user, you're prob like I said earlier, you probably have your smartphone paired, and you have this clip to your truck, your ATV, your backpack. You want to get better reception on it, and you're using your, your phone on here. But anyway, it looks like it's not going to work. Why does this not surprise me? But anyway, uh, here, uh, if you're running into some uh, firmware update issues, remember, folks, on the Maps 6, pull out the batteries, give them a try, and uh, let me know if performance got been, uh, is a little bit better. I've noticed a few slowness, uh, especially with the weather and some of the other things. The track issue, that is something I need to track. If you check the community post, uh, I tried to do a video here on synchronizing activities on here and synchronizing it to the Explorer portal. And there was a 1999 timestamp issue. Uh, don't know if this is going to fix it. I want to do some activities this week with it. I'm heading out on the road, so I want to log some clicks on this, try this out. So anyway, uh, that's it for the live stream. Um, a little bit different, just down here in the basement. All right, thanks for watching, David. Really appreciate it. Any comments or questions, uh, post them in the community posts or the community section or the video to that a little bit later. Uh, otherwise, folks, I'll be uh, continuing to post some new videos on the 66 and the Instinct as there are the, the latest uh, models. So have a good